This video is about the fever system and the Zeeman effect. This important physical effect that was once honored with the Nobel Prize has many variations. A lot of these we can make visible with this system. For example, the basic effect is to introduce a spectral lamp in a magnetic field. We use a cadmium spectral lamp and then we will analyze by how much the spectral lines will split with dependence on the magnitude of the magnetic field. Another version is to see what difference does it make if I have the magnetic field longitudinal in contrast to a transversal magnetic field. A further version is to not have the normal Zeeman effect, but the anomalous Zeeman effect, which is also visible in a scatmium lamp in a different area of the spectra, in the blue-green area. Further on, we can analyze the polarization of the different components that split up. So basically, this video will be the later part about the setup of the experiment and to show you how you can use the fever equipment to get good results, even of Bohr's magneton. Now we will show you the setup of the fever Siemens effect step by step. It's based on the optical profile bench, which is one meter long. The component that's our specimen that we analyze is a cadmium lamp. We introduce this as well as all the other components on the track. This component as well as all the others move on the optical base track on, in slide mounts which fix the lenses, the magnet, and all the other components that we need here. The magnetic system which will produce the field needed for the Zeeman effect is here this permanent magnet system. We will mount it on the optical profile bench via the stem which we connect to the system. And then the slide mount to the bench. To change the magnetic field in the position where the cadmium lamp will sit later, we can take them further apart, the pole pieces of this magnetic system, or to bring them closer together. This will guarantee us a change in the magnetic field, but it will still be homogeneous in the central where the spectral lamp sits. In this magnetic system that sits now firmly on the optical profile bench, we clamp the cadmium lamp. It's introduced between the pole shoes after we make sure that they are apart far enough to take up the system and clamped by this one screw. To make the correct setup of the uh, experiment, I will now follow in the rest the fever manual for this Zeeman effect. So I see here that the next step is to introduce the iris di diaphragm. It should sit at 20 centimeters. Next will be a lens of 15 millimeters. That is this one. It should sit at a position here on the optical profile bench at 25 centimeters. One very important part, of course, is this fabric Garou interferometer that will allow us to detect the small changes in the spectral lines. It's only a change of a few nanometers or parts of a nanometer, but we need to make it visible to analyze the Zeeman effect. Into this fabric Garou interferometer, we can mount the red filter because the red spectral line of this cadmium lamp we will see the normal Siemens effect. I see after the fabric bureau in the parameter, we need to insert a lens of 300 millimeter focal length. Doesn't really matter where exactly the analyzer sits with which we will analyze the 
different polarizations of the components of the lines. It's important that a final lens with 50 millimeters length sits at 73 centimeters. So that we built with the, these two lenses a telescope with which can observe the splitting of the central lines of the lines that can is achieved by this fabric peru interferometer. Now that we have the basic setup complete, we need a device to measure the actual splitting. We have either the camera or, as I can show you now, now the setup where it's measured manually. We put a sliding device in here that can move our scale horizontally that will be needed later on this distance precisely to measure the splitting of the lines. Now that the basic setup is complete, we connect the spectral lamp to the power supply and switch it on. Then we are ready to do some fine adjustments. If everything is adjusted fine, we can start with the measurements. They consist basically in changing the magnetic field that is applied to the spectral lamp by changing the distance of the pole pieces. We can either measure this magnetic field or take the curve given in the manual for the permanent magnetic system. In con correspondence to this magnetic field, we measure the splitting of the spectral lines. We do this by aligning one of the lines and the scale with one of the split lines, then we change via this sliding device the line to coincide with another part of the spectral line. We finally measure the distance that we move the sliding device and can correlate this to the magnetic field strength. If we put everything together in the end, this will lead us to worse magneton. Up to this point, the system was shown with a permanent magnet. In case you have the system with electromagnet, the setup will look more or less like this. I assume that you connected your magnetic system already to the power supply and that all connections is described in the manual. I will show you now a little detail on how to insert the cadmium lamp into this system. The cadmium lamp has three little feet here on the bottom. You have to unscrew these little screws here so you can turn them around that they fit this system now. After you change the directions of all these three little feet, you can take your lamp and insert it between the pole shoes of your electromagnet system. Again, you tighten this screw to fix it. Now your setup is complete for the measurement with the electromagnet. With this electromagnet system, we also have the possibility to make visible the longitudinal Zeeman effect. Since the pole pieces here are drilled as well as in a permanent magnet system, we can bring the table for heavy loads around by 90 degrees and now the magnetic field is longitudinal to the direction of observation. Since we have the holes, as I pointed out, we can observe what happens to the spectral lines in the cadmium lamp. If you have the version of the experiment not with the manual measurement of the splitting of the spectral lines, but with CCD camera, you put your computer on the table, mount your CCD camera to the optical track, and, of course, in this case, you don't need this part 
that is only for manual measurement. Now that we have the digital camera introduced in our system, we are able to capture shots of what we would actually see by the naked eye, bring it to the computer and analyze it with the software supplied. Not all only can it be well made visible the splitting of the lines in relation to the magnetic field. We can also analyze how the different parts of the spectral lines are linearly polarized by introducing this polarizer. When we would have the longitudinal effect, we would see that the lines are polarized circular, not linearly. In addition, we can uh, switch over to the anomalous semen effect. This is possible since the cadmium lamp we use here shows different spectral lines, some that have the norm normal semen effect and some other ones, the anomalous one. The red one we showed up to now is the normal semen effect. The green bluish one that I will show now shows the anomalous semen effect. All these effects that can be made visible are very well seen if we change the magnetic field during observation. With the electric magnetic system, this can be done especially fast by turning up the current through the electromagnet and turning it down. 